Nice CNC fork extenders for the KTM 390 Adventure. If this is something you have experience with or something you're curious about, there are definitely some positives and there's some negatives. So if it's something of interest to you, stick around and I'll talk about my experience on these. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. The nice CNC fork extenders on the KTN 390 Adventure. So I did the install video on these sometime around February or March of this year. So if you wanna see how they're installed, you can go back to that. I will try to remember to leave a link in the description. So just real quick, there's a lot of details in there about them, um, but just as a, as a recap, they slide the forks down the triple clamp approximately an inch and a quarter or somewhere between 35 and 40 millimeters. So effectively what that does is it gives you some additional ground clearance, which I think came out to about three quarters of an inch if my memory serves correctly. Now I have around four or 5,000 miles riding on the fork extenders to include uh, off-road riding on the Mid-Atlantic Backcountry Discovery Route, plus some other stuff that I did uh, off-road up there, and then a lot of road riding. So I think I have a good feel of how it changed the bike, the dynamics of the bike, the performance of the bike, and I can talk about both the positives and the negatives that I have experienced so far. I'm gonna start by talking about the positives with installing the fork extenders so that you have the feels, you have, you have uh, a good impression of them to start with, and then I'll get into the negatives. So maybe the negatives won't um, overcome your, your continued interest in the fork extenders. So that's really the way it's gonna break down. So positives and then I'll go into negatives. So um, let's get started with the positives. Number one positive and really the reason anyone would put fork extenders on this bike is to get more ground clearance. And that's exactly what you get. You get an extra three quarters of an inch. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but it does make a bit of a difference when you're riding in very rocky terrain and maybe stuff that's a bit chunked out. So I was doing some riding yesterday in some very rocky areas and I did still bottom out, but had I not had that little bit of extra clearance, I think it would have been a much harsher uh, hit with the skid plate on these rocks. So really the, the number one thing is the increased ground clearance and giving you a little bit more ability to go over uh, chunky, uh, difficult terrain. The other positive thing that happens by putting the fork extensions in is you by sliding the forks down it lifts the front end it also increases the rake so effectively what that does is it slows down the steering just a little bit now it's not a huge difference but it is certainly something that i noticed so while riding off road i noticed that when i would peg steer that the bike had a little bit more of a chance uh, feel of kind of gliding back and forth as opposed to being twitchy and steering and having it move real real fast taking the uh, handlebar inputs and moving quickly now this isn't an overly twitchy bike but i noticed it did slow it down a little bit the areas where i think that the biggest difference came in was especially yesterday when i was riding through some very chunky rocky stuff i was hitting some bigger rocks and what would normally maybe throw the handlebars back and forth or toss the bike side to side seemed to slow that down just just enough that it wasn't unnerving i would feel the bike kind of move back and forth but uh, it, it did seem like it, it handled differently in that, those conditions. The other place that I really noticed it was in mud. Um, not deep mud, but a couple inch mud where it's, it's more slippery and slick. Riding through that, I, I know before, it would have a tendency just to you know slip around a little bit more. It felt a more planted this last summer riding through those conditions. But that also might be an effect of having full knobby tires in that mud, but it just was, a more a little bit more confidence inspiring that i could get through there i could stand up i could just take my time go slow and not worry about the wheels slipping back and forth so the two positive things that i see out of the fork extension the extenders is the increased ground clearance and a little bit slower steering for off-road all right let's talk about the drawbacks or the negatives with adding the fork extensions there's about four I think that I came up with based on comments I had seen after doing the installation and just my own experience. So the first thing that you should know about and what you're going to see comments is when you slide the, fork ex the forks down in the triple clamp, the fork has a bit of a taper. So the bottom clamp of the triple clamp 
the top bowl is not going to pinch down all the way and you're going to have a little bit of a gap left in there and i had seen quite a few people um not necessarily complaining about it but making a point that you can get some dirt and debris and they didn't like how well it clamped i'm not really concerned about that because the bottom does clamp um, and i can get it fully torqued and since the fork itself, the way the, the extension is in there, it's impossible for this fork to go out the top of the clamp. So it'd be a bigger issue if you have a really bad off because it's not clamped great, um, or as effectively as it should having both bolts uh, clamped all the way down is that you could potentially twist the forks in the, in the triple clamp, which twisting forks can happen. So you would just have to loosen those up, run it up and down a couple of times, and then put them back to torque spec. But because that's something I'd seen in the comments, I wanted to make sure that, that it was known. The uh, negative side of having the increased rake and having the steering a little bit slower is that when you're on road, it may not handle as quickly through the corners as what you, you were used to before with the bike before the extensions are in there. Now, I, I say this all the time, I don't ride particularly fast. I enjoy my riding, but I'm not trying to see how fast I can go through corners. But I did notice that. There's also an effect that I think in conjunction with that is I did a lot of road miles this last year, a lot of higher speed road miles with curves and the high fender acts as a bit of a sail. So when I wanna make adjustments, that thing was really resisting it, especially 45 miles per hour and up. So it was a combination of both the fork extension and the high fender. So it's not just the extensions, it is the, it is the fender on there as well. So the combination of those make it a little bit difficult to just narrow down the effects of the fork extension. I do know that it has slowed down the steering just a fraction. So if that is something that uh, concerns you, you know about that as well. Now, I had also seen some comments and experienced this next negative myself. I don't consider this to be a significant negative, but it is something that I had ran into. And that is with the increased rake, when the steering is at its lock, when you're doing some slow speed work, maybe a little uh, U-turn or something like that, I noticed that it had a tendency to want to fall to the inside of the corner. And I didn't have that feel before where I could sit very upright and not have that feeling. So that falling in uh, was just something I had to get adjusted to when I was riding. Now, making a lot, doing the filming, I make a lot of U-turns and, and things like that. So I would know that if I started feeling that, that, getting that feeling of falling in, I would just add a little bit of throttle and the bike would stand back up. But it's something to be aware of so it doesn't catch you off guard if you put that in there. The other fairly significant uh, negative is that the seat height increased quite a bit. I used to be able to get the balls on my feet down, both of them at the same time. And now with the increased seat height, I'm on tippy toes. So it was uh, a bit of an irritation for me in getting adjusted to it over the summer, especially riding through heavy traffic coming out of DC to get into the East Coast riding. So I'd have to shift over a little bit more, move my cheek over a little bit more to get my foot down. But the bike is light. So even though I, I am on tippy toes for both feet, getting one over, it, it's not a big deal. It's just, I was used to being able to get both feet down and now I can't quite do that as easily. So that is something, if you're a shorter rider, you may want to um, take into consideration. If you're a tall rider, long legs, it won't be a problem. Um, for context, I'm 5'10", 5'10 uh, and a half. And then my inseam is right around 33 inches. So if you're somewhere in that range, uh, that's something to, to keep, in, keep in mind. But I also have the ergo seat, which is added another half inch. And then I've got this uh, sheepskin seat cover, which adds a little bit more. So I, I'm really quite up there um, because I was doing things to get some comfort. So seat height is definitely something to keep in mind if you're gonna do the fork extensions. The absolute biggest negative with the fork extensions is the kickstand, it comes up a little bit short. And this bike really leans over a long way. I really don't like that part of it. When I pull up to gas stations, where my normal distance from the pump where I was used to, I get there, I lean over, and then all of a sudden I'm pressed into the pump and I might be having to climb off from the other side. And then um, it's just, I, I've also had it where I've been trying to climb off and maybe I lean a little bit too far back and I'm fully loaded. And all of a sudden the front wheel starts tipping up. So that's one of the things that's been a bit of an irritation for me 
is I need to come up with a solution to get it sitting up higher. I've done that with another bike had an F800 GS. It leaned a really long way over, probably about as far as this does. And uh, because of the way I like to get on and off, I don't like to throw my leg back and forth. I like to step off using the pegs. Um, it's put me in a position where I have to step off on the uh, opposite side that you would expect. So that is, uh, in my opinion, the biggest negative for adding a fork extensions, especially if you're vertically challenged, it's gonna add uh, more frustration for you because the bike goes over so far when you drop the, the uh, kickstand. All right, that's the positives and negatives for the nice CNC fork extenders that I had put on my bike. If you also have these on there and your experience is the same or different, leave those in the comments below. I'd like to get your comments down there to maybe provide some confirmation to other people that are interested in these, whether to get them or not get them. And then I'm also curious to see if any of your experiences have been different than mine on the bike with the fork extensions. And if there's any other negatives or positives that you can come up with, really appreciate knowing what those are. Anyway, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Get out, do some riding, ride safe, and I will see you out there.